Nintendo has kept New Zelda games as this darling that is currently not allowed to be handled by anyone other than the Inner Circle in Kyoto. Obviously, there was a major exception from this rule in the late 90s and the first half of the 2000s, when Capcom developed multiple Game Boy Zelda titles from where the Zelda team headed by series producer Eiji Numa recruited the genius that is Zelda Skyward Sword Breath of the Wild and its sequel director Hidemaru Fujibayashi. So if that experience works so well, why don't Nintendo outsource the Legend of Zelda IP to other branches of Nintendo, other Japanese partners like the former collaborative partner Capcom in neighboring Osaka, the obvious answer to this question is the burden that modern Zelda holds, especially after Breath of the Wild changed everything when it comes to the scope of the projects but also fiscal success thanks to the organic open world. Sorry, open air. So are we bound from now on to the end of time to only see new The Legend of Zelda games every 6 years or so? Or could we see a return to the 2 year cycles in the 2000s and 2010s until 2017? Be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press the notification bell as we in the next 10 minutes or so go in depth into how we could see way more than two new Zelda games per decade from the 2020s. But first, we have to go over two problems. Problem 1. Lack of diversification until the next open air game is ready. Or don't put all your eggs in one basket. Well, when it comes to new Zelda games, it seems as Nintendo is making exactly this mistake. When the Breath of the Wild hype was at its hottest, they simply failed to deliver a brand new Zelda experience in, say, 2020. Obviously, this makes sense as no doubt the Legend of Zelda's open world formula is in the right hands, the massive Zelda team. It is just that it takes five years to develop new open world titles. But the thing is that not every The Legend of Zelda game has to be a seamlessly open air title. We have two other types of Zelda titles which worked perfectly until 2017, Top Down and Linear 3D, with fantastic gameplay and most of all dungeons and bosses. And it seems like Nintendo doesn't want to return to this formula as a new mid-gen game type between each open world release. Or, in other words, instead of making new games in this simpler style, they have become too reliant on remakes, re-releases of a decade or older title, which is our problem number two. In the last five years after Breath of the Wild's release, remakes more than new games have been filling the gaps between each new 3D release. In fact, no new Legend of Zelda games have been released since 2017. Since remember, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity isn't a THE Legend of Zelda game, but rather a Hyrule Warriors game. Hence, it is likely not in the Legend of Zelda timeline. The hint is after all in the name of the franchise and the gameplay style Legend of Zelda offers, primarily centered on dungeons. All the Legend of Zelda games have some sort of dungeons, Age of Calamity doesn't. But that is beside the point. The big problem is that from 2011 to 2021, Nintendo has remade six past Zelda games, and though we love the three remakes and three remasters, we would have much preferred to have a sequel or two to each of these instead in the same time frame. And in a way, we did get a sequel to a beloved Zelda title, A Link Between Worlds to A Link to the Past. Another title which would have ended up as another remake if series producer Eiji Numa didn't intervene and instead challenged Shigeru Miyamoto to instead make a sequel rather than a remake to A Link to the Past. The result speaks for itself, an excellent 2013 Zelda installment which fits seamlessly into the downfall timeline. Then you have Triforce Heroes, a multiplayer title which clearly demonstrated in 2015 that limited Zelda resources should be used elsewhere, specifically on new single player adventures. Isn't it ironic that in the era of limitations when Nintendo's resources had to be divided between handheld and console divisions, we simply saw more new Zelda releases than we do now? One of the reasons for this is that Nintendo had to support each console equally. Hence why there were two Zelda teams that developed new titles, Top Down for handhelds and 3D for consoles. It is just that since 2017, or actually 2013, all of Nintendo's resources on new games have been focused on the open world team. As you soon will see, the Zelda franchise is both blessed and cursed by Breath of the Wild. Blessed as the sales have never been higher than the nearly 25 million copies sold of this one game, and the same goes for the review scores which are the closest any Zelda game has been to Ocarina of Time's level. But at the same time, it is also cursed since everything remotely similar that is produced by the Zelda team will be compared to the over 5 year long development effort that was Breath of the Wild. Hence why Nintendo doesn't want other new Zelda titles which are not on the same level and instead offer us another dose of remakes told us over in longer and longer intervals between each release, a clear trend we have seen from 1998 to 2022. 
less than two years between Ocarina and Majora, three years between Majora's Mask and The Wind Waker, over three years between The Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, five years between Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, over five years between Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild, and likely slightly under six years between Breath of the Wild and its assets reusing sequel. This development should worry us as the gaps get bigger and bigger despite massive help from Monolith Soft. It is clear that open world Zelda titles are far more time consuming to produce and thus we need something else than remakes to fill out this gap. Since the hunger is primarily for 3D games, why not make more 3D games? But not open world games, but linear titles that fit into the pre-Breath of the Wild timeline. Here you have multiple possibilities within each of the three timeline branches after Ocarina of Time, and teams that have the experience to continue where they left off are not being granted the trust beyond making remake after remake. A perfect example here is Grezzo, who made the acclaimed remakes of the two Hero of Time games on the Nintendo 3DS. After two projects like this, you would expect to be tasked under the supervision of Aonuma or Fujibayashi to create, say, the final installment of the Hero of Time within the same linear formula as the Nintendo 64 games, but on a somewhat grander scale. But nope, Grezzo has instead been put to making more remakes and HD ports on the Switch. First, the very solid Link's Awakening and in 2021, the Miitopia upgrade from 3DS to Switch. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Miitopia was only brought over to Switch to see if it was possible to do the same for Ocarina of Time 3D and Majora's Mask 3D in, say, 2023 for the 25th anniversary of the former. Another easy way to give us a Zelda without the effort that a new title will require. It is just that this is the embodiment of laziness from Nintendo when it comes to granting us new Zelda games outside open world titles every six years or so. Another developer who has also dedicated to remaking titles, but in this case of Metroid, is Mercury Steam. They delivered a brilliant remake and reimagining of Metroid 2 and Samus Returns, and were immediately after tasked by Metroid creator Yoshio Sakamoto to bring the cancelled Metroid Dread back from the dead, which they have done with flying colours. And all of this is happening while Retro Studios is working on a new 3D Metroid title, Metroid Prime 4. In other words, the experience from Metroid shows that also Zelda can work on two new Zelda games at the same time. And after all, it was something they did until everyone, plus Monolith Soft, became bound to the open-air project that were Breath of the Wild and its sequel. Meanwhile, we have Grezzo, who is simply underused and underappreciated when they could instead develop either the final game of the Hero of Time set between Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess, or bring the cancelled Twilight Princess sequel back to life. And that is just two examples found within the Child timeline branch, so there's plenty more in the Downfall timeline, like this cancelled Sheik game that was suggested by Retro Studios. It is just that the Zelda team has not shown the same interest, as the creator of Metroid has done to have a talented developer of remakes take the next step and become Nintendo's new go-to developer beside the main 3D team. And that attitude, or if you prefer arrogance, ended the great Zelda-Nintendo Capcom collaboration, when Nintendo simply brought over the greatest Capcom geniuses to Nintendo instead of having them continue developing new titles like the Minish Cap. We've now made it clear that Grezzo has not been granted a blessing that will give us new Zelda games in linear 3D style, so could someone else do it instead? Absolutely. Sonic fans who made their own Sonic games were eventually tasked by Sega to develop the best rated Sonic games in 20 years, Sonic Mania. And equally, we have big Zelda fans who have made brilliant fan animations and tributes which could have been recruited for the development of a new Zelda title. But nope. Nintendo doesn't want to do that. And just like that, Kenya, developed by Ember Lab, the guys who made the gorgeous Majora's Mask short film, A Terrible Fate, became a PlayStation 4 and 5 console exclusive. A critically acclaimed third-person action-adventure game which plays like an evolved form of the linear 3D Zelda of old. Kenna could have easily have been the third Hero of Time game if Nintendo had not had their protocol of shutting down fan projects and suing its creators, but rather reached out to them with an offer they couldn't refuse. Honestly, a part of me hopes that after Kenna, Nintendo will reach out to Ember Lab to create the third Hero of Time title that they are clearly destined to deliver. We can always dream. As Kenna has demonstrated, not everything Zelda has to be open world or open air to be excellent. And I really hope the Zelda team and Nintendo sees this release on their greatest rivals platform as a wake up call. One to reach out to talented developers like Ember Lab or other third party developers to outsource the responsibility of linear 3D, non-fully open world Zelda, or even Grezzo to create worthy holdover titles until the next big open air title releases from the Zelda team. 
These are the type of Legend of Zelda titles with dungeons that we are certain most Zelda fans will prefer to play over another load of remakes and Hyrule Warriors titles. Plus, who knows, Nintendo and the Zelda team might just like they did with the Capcom collaboration could even add a later stage headhunt talent from these studios, based on the Zelda experience to lead future 3D Zelda titles within the Zelda team. And when we're at it, why only outsource linear 3D Zelda and not top-down Zelda as well? As clearly, the top-down Zelda team at Nintendo is nowhere to be seen after a link between worlds. So perhaps Nintendo could ask the creators of Eastward, Pixpill to, you know, take care of the next top-down Zelda title? After all, we'll need a new top-down Zelda title sooner or later. But I guess top-down Zelda is just a too big topic to go over extensively in a more general overview that this Zelda video is about longer and longer gaps between new Zelda games releases. But to make this one more visible, be sure to comment under this video, like and share it to make it more visible, subscribe to Commonwealth Realm and obviously with notification bells on. Finally, a big thanks goes to all our patreon.com slash common realm patrons and in particular to royal producer Charles Shash. You rock and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.